All right, guys, come on. I think you got him. Guys. Guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new video. This one is a special one because today I'm going to give you some helpful tips on how to succeed in the game Tangle Deep for Nintendo Switch. After close to 40 hours of playing, I wanted to share some very simple things that you can do to shave probably hours off the learning curve. My name is Mikey, let's get into it. First off, I want to say that I love this game. I think it does an exceptional job in explaining the game mechanics, however, many of these things come later into the game after some time exploring or are hidden in conversations where you might have to read quite a bit. I for one don't mind reading so much, but I can understand not many people, including myself, have time to play a single game for a hundred or more hours. But for me, this may be the first game to have me do just that. Let's get on with the first tip though because I don't want to keep you in this video for a hundred hours either. Tip number one, explore everywhere. We're starting out with a bang of a tip here. I know it sounds like a lot, but exploring every nook and cranny, every dark hidden side area, leave no stone unturned. Doing this will allow you to open up new pathways, gain items, including those precious health flasks, find secret side quests, or may even lead you to a dragon boss battle. Here's the thing with movement. You can either use the left stick or the directional pad. If you use the left stick, you can have what is sort of a confirmation of movement prior to actually moving. It will require you to press A before you move, and you can see where your character is headed by the arrow that appears, pointing in the direction of where your move will be. Side note on this, having the grid turned on, as I do here, is extremely helpful, especially for those just starting out or for the most precise battling. You'll know exactly how far an enemy is and you can plan routes that will many times save your life. As I mentioned earlier, you can also move with the directional pad. This method does not give you that prompt for movement confirmation or show you which square you're headed to. Rather, it just moves you immediately. This is great for getting around quickly, maybe while you're in town or in an area that you've already cleared and are not in any immediate danger from getting attacked by an enemy or stepping in a hazardous area like lava. Whatever way you decide to move, you can hold buttons for more rapid movement. That is, you can hold the directional pad to continue moving or hold the left stick and A at the same time to continue fluidly moving. Another minor but super helpful thing about exploration is fast travel. If you hold the ZR button, a radial menu will come up. One of those options in that menu is a blue portal. That blue portal will allow you to travel to certain places you've been to before, such as important areas, hidden shops, and more. If you happen to be out in Tangle Deep exploring, using this fast travel will not give you an option to go anywhere else, but it will allow you to travel back to town. This is an important step in making sure you are maximizing your items and money, which I'll talk a little bit about later, but also how you can fully heal yourself and any companions in a pinch. A very important note on this fast travel, if you are in Tangle Deep, that portal is delayed. So summoning the portal will take approximately nine steps of movement in order to appear. This is so the player cannot just dip out at the first sign of danger. Remember, everything in this game is calculated, so plan ahead. Tip number two, cook a lot. This is actually kind of a three part tip. Along those same lines, don't buy a lot of things early on if you can avoid it and conserve those health flasks. Just trust me on this. You're going to be exploring a lot of areas, a lot of rooms and so many levels. The two things you're going to find are a gang of loot and a ton of food. I'll make this easy. 99% of the loot you find, you won't need. It's like a treasure hunt. Those special needle in the haystack items that you find, those diamonds in the rough. The only items you'll need are those Aladdin items if you get that reference. As for the food, that is the complete opposite. Keep all the food you find. This will be your saving grace and has been for me on countless occasions. What you can do with the food is take it back to town, head over to the bonfire, and use this bonfire to cook some delicious meals. 
Through your exploration of Tangle Deep, you'll probably come across some recipes. Finding those recipes will unlock some easy ways to prep food, but no recipes are required to make anything. You can go Breath of the Wild style and just throw whatever sounds good into the pot, cook it up. What do you think would make a good combo? Try it and find out. The great thing about Tangle Deep is that you can never make any dubious, inedible food. It's always going to result in something beneficial to you or perhaps your monsters. Whether it restores health, stamina, or energy, you can get some use from it. Usually, if you throw in ingredients that are incompatible items or just random food, it will come out in a curry dish, which is honestly one of the best dishes early on because it restores a bit of everything and doesn't keep you full for all that long. What this means is that you can eat again sooner should you need to. I'll let you explore those options for yourself, but here's a couple important notes on cooking. If you do find or unlock recipes, you can quickly cook them by standing in the square next to the fire pit and opening up the recipe menu. Once it's open, if you have the ingredients, the dish will display white text, meaning you can literally just select it and it will cook the dish using your ingredients automagically. This is great for bulk cooking. The only downside is cooking this way will not allow you to add a spice or garnish to it. These extra ingredients that you can find, such as cinnamon, star anise, nutmeg, cilantro even, these will give an extra boost to the dish you're cooking, but it can only be done manually. So keep this in mind when you are cooking. Also, if you get rose petals, you can use that as a garnish to cook a dish strictly for monsters only. I don't want to give too much away here, but let's just say this will allow a romantic evening to occur for your monsters under the right conditions. Maybe I'll talk about that more in another video. Let me know. Tip number three, unlock spells and abilities early. There are two things that happen when you kill monsters in Tangle Deep. You gain experience and you gain JP, which stands for job points. In the beginning, they sort of go hand in hand. Experience raises your level, which allows your character to get stronger, and JP, the job points, allow you to unlock new abilities for your character. Remember, new moves equals more advanced and powerful combat. You'll want to unlock everything your class has to offer, and to do so, you need to be aware of when you are able to do so. Well, it's simple. When you have enough JP to unlock, or in some cases upgrade, an ability, your character's avatar will have an asterisk next to their picture down at the bottom of the screen. When you see this, you should go see what you're able to unlock and pick what you think sounds beneficial to you. Remember, you can unlock them in any order, but unlocking them all sooner rather than later is the key to unlocking your character's potential, which in a roguelike game is essential for staying alive. Similarly, there are two masteries as well, weapon class and job mastery. These are separate from the JP abilities that I just mentioned, but they will still cost JP to learn. First are the weapon class masteries. Once you reach a certain level, you'll unlock Jurito, the trainer of these masteries. These are basically lessons Jurito teaches you that requires nothing but a large JP payment to him. What he does with that JP, I have no idea. The benefits from his lessons are generally passive in nature, whether it's a boost to specific moves or a general increase in stats. Either way, they are extremely helpful and will help make your character that much more formidable in the depths of the deep. After you've learned all weapon class masteries, Jurito will then offer job masteries, which will yield an emblem that you can equip to boost your stats even further. These are a bit different though, not only is a JP payment required, but also a challenge must be completed as well. These challenges vary in nature, but they are all fairly dangerous. Upon taking up Jurito on one of these challenges, he'll send you to a temple of sorts that's full with enemies. A task will then be given to you. Sometimes it's destroying pillars, other times it's eliminating all the enemies. This can be difficult enough, but to top it off, there are also item usage restrictions. You'll only be given a certain amount of health flasks, and will be limited to only a very small number of consumables to use while you're in this place. Sticking within these restrictions is a pass requirement, so make sure you're strong enough to undertake these challenges. A couple minor notes on these. One, you can still definitely die during these tasks, 
and it will still end your game in any mode but adventure should you die. Also, you are able to transport yourself out of the task should you find it too difficult. However, if you do chicken out, there are no refunds and you'll have to live with yourself for giving up. Just kidding, running or teleporting are two completely legitimate strategies and there's no shame in living to fight another day. Which brings me to my last tip, tip number four, have patience. That's just a life tip, not a tangle deep tip by the way. Okay, so I'm going to lump a few quick things in this point, but the main takeaway is that Tangle Deep is a very strategic game. From builds and synergies to every single battle, you must take care in what you do. Plan out your moves and know your abilities. Recognize weaknesses in yourself and your enemies. Whether that's elemental weaknesses or perhaps defensive weaknesses, be aware. Be sure to carry a mix of ranged and melee weapons and don't neglect upgrading your items via the dream portal. Keep an abundance of a variety of items on your person and know when to use them. A lot of it is situational and even trial and error and a lot of it takes quite a bit of time. There's definitely a lot to this game, Tangle Deep. However, I know any RPG fan would appreciate everything there is on offer here. I could do a whole video on just these last few things that I mentioned, or really anything in between, so if that's something you'd like to see for number two, just let me know down in the comments. Once again, this was Mikey, and thanks so much for watching, I hope you learned something today, and I hope you can go on to enjoy Tangle Deep even more. If you heard something that you didn't know today, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to show support for what we're doing here. For more great Nindy content, don't forget to check out our other videos here on our YouTube channel or check out NindyNexus.net. But for now, I'm out of here. Be safe, everyone out there. Wash your hands, call your loved ones, and we'll see you next time.